Hello, everybody. My name is Karen Batty. It is February 23rd, and this is Business Basis. It is one of two trainings that we recommend for all new consultants on our team. Uh, tonight, we're going to be covering what we do behind the scenes to have a successful business. And then also we have cooking show training night, which is usually on the first day of the month. And I don't have my calendar open to April, so let me take a quick peek. That is going to be on, yes, April 4th. That is a Tuesday evening. So if you live close to me, we do a live cooking show training in my home where we review you know, what we do at our cooking shows from the time you walk into the party until the time you leave. So be between those two trainings and the support that you get on PC University, um, you should have all the information you need to, to get the ball rolling. Okay, so uh, before we get started, how many of you love the check products? Raise your hand. Love the products. Yes, okay, good. I see everybody's hands up. How many of you believe that our hosts make out great? Yeah. And how many of you firmly believe in your ability to succeed in this business? Okay, not, not as many hands that time, but most of them. So that's good. That's good. Um, do any of you ever wonder, hmm, I wonder if I have what it takes to be successful as a pamper check consultant? That's, that's what I find when I first got started. Sure, I believed in the products. I believed in the business. Uh, I believed in the host rewards, but I just wasn't so sure about myself. And so that's kind of where we're going to start here. Let me do my little screen share. Here we go. Okay, because a lot of times people wonder, you know, is it personality? Um, do you have to be a good cook? I mean, you know, what does it take to be a successful consultant? And there is no cookie cutter version. If you ever go to our sales meetings or you go to a national conference, you will see that there's all kinds of shapes to success in this business. Young, old, people who love to cook, people who hate to cook are successful in this business. People who do it alongside a full-time job or alongside children or both. Um, people who are outgoing, people who are quiet and shy. I mean, all walks of people can be successful in this business. So you might wonder to yourself, well, what is the common denominator? And one of them is the belief circle. And this is true not just with Pampered Chef, but with anything. In, in anything in life, pretty much, what we believe to a great degree determines the actions we take. And the actions that we take to a great degree determine the results we get. So, and then those results then reinforce our belief. So, like I said, this isn't just true with Pamper Chef, it's kind of true with anything. I like to use my son as an example. Um, he believed he was, going to good, he was going to be a good piano player. If you ever listened to him play piano in those early days and months, oh, it didn't seem like he was going to be very good, um, especially since his older sister had been playing. And when she first started, she learned a little more easily than he did. So I really didn't think he was going to be that good. But his belief was he was going to be good. And as a result, he practiced. And because he practiced, he got the results of, yeah, look at me. I'm a good piano player. And guess what? In the end, he was right. So um, it is important in this business uh, to have belief. And if you don't have belief in yourself, then have belief in the process that successful people do certain things like, you know, follow the um, ideas that, that we give you at the training, follow the information that you get on PC University. And so some people jump in on the actions first. Because it's sort of, it's a, it's a circle, right? It's sort of like a merry-go-round. So you can jump in on the actions, even if you don't have a firm belief in yourself right this very minute. You can say, you know what? I'm just going to jump in on the actions. I'm going to do what, has, what is tried and true and has been shown to work. Then you'll get the results, and then chances are you'll have that belief. Okay? And think of, uh, think of a child learning how to walk, you know? They're just walk, look, looking around at everybody else walking and they keep going. It doesn't matter if they fall, right? They get back up and sooner or later, most of us learn how to walk. So have you ever heard that uh, quote, whether you think you can or you think you can't? You're right. Yeah. So just tell yourself, let, let yourself know you can be successful at this and jump in on those actions and stick with it. Okay. So that's something that all um, successful consultants have in common. If they don't have the belief, or they do have the belief, they jump in on the actions. They take the actions. Okay, so if you want to be successful, 
take actions. All right. Another thing I want to talk to you about is what we call the success model. And very often when we think of success in Camper Chef or actually in anything, we think of ourselves as you know, standing there somewhere in time and somewhere out there is success and somewhere out there is failure. But it's almost as if someone has blindfolded us, twirled us around and said, go ahead and pin the tail on the donkey. And uh, we don't know where the donkey is. So we're thinking we don't know where success is and we don't know where failure is. But we know we want success, we want to avoid failure. So what can happen is we can think to ourselves, okay, well, here's an idea. I think I'll try it a little bit. I'll put my toe in the water and try it a little bit. And you put your toe in the water, you try it out a little bit, and all of a sudden it's like, ooh, this doesn't get me all the results I want right away. And it feels awkward because I've never really done it before. So it doesn't feel like success. So we label it sometimes as failure and we retreat because we think it's failure. Then we hear another little idea and we think, oh, I'll put my toe in the water and try out that little idea. And we do that. And again, it's new, so it feels awkward. It maybe doesn't get us all the results we want on, on day one. So it doesn't feel like success. So we label it as failure and we retreat. And what can happen is before too long, we feel sort of paralyzed. And we're thinking, we don't know where success is. It can feel like every time you reach out, you're getting something, but it doesn't feel like success, so it feels like failure sometimes, so we retreat. But this is not the real success model. Here is the real deal. We are out there somewhere in time, and success is there, but in between us and being wildly successful is a learning curve. Would you guys agree that that is the case, not just with Camper Chef, but with anything in life? Yeah, uh, you know, if you're gonna learn how to play the piano, you're gonna hit a few wrong notes. If you wanna learn a foreign language, you're gonna make a few mistakes. Uh, if you wanna learn how to knit, you're probably gonna start off with a scarf that has dropped stitches and too tight in one section, too loose in the other. Doesn't matter what you're learning how to do, practice makes perfect. And most people aren't perfect the first time around. So another thing that successful consultants have in common is that they embrace the fact that there's a learning curve, okay? And if you want to get through the learning curve quickly, stay in close contact with your director. We've been there, done that, and we will guide you through that learning curve. And if you really want to be successful, do your best to laugh through the learning curve. That was one of the things I had going for me in this business. Before Pampered Chef, I was a nurse. I worked on a surgical trauma unit. And it was pretty, pretty intense. Um, so there was really not a whole lot that could happen uh, with Pampered Chef that was gonna get me too nervous or too upset. So something burned, oh well. So at my first show, I dropped the pizza on the floor after setting off a smoke alarm. Oh well, no one's dying. And yes, those things really did happen. Um, I laughed my way through it, and as a result, I got three bookings and my first team member signed at my very first show. So you never know. If you can just embrace it and laugh through it and know that perfection is not required for success, um, just have a good time with it. After all, we do pamper chef parties, right? So do you guys feel like you can do that? You can jump in on actions and, and embrace the learning curve? Okay, excellent. All right. Uh, now, success is in the eye of the beholder. As a Pampered Chef consultant, you are the CEO of your corporation, of your business. It is up to you to determine exactly what you'd like to have happen with your business. It is up to us as trainers to help you get there. However, that being said, I was told when I was new in business that two shows a week was the magic number. That um, it was a great pace to start at because um, you got enough practice in your, in your first month or so so that you became really confident and skilled. How many of you drive a car? Show of hands. Okay, so if someone came up to you and said, I wanna learn how to drive a car, but until I get good, I just wanna drive maybe once or twice a month. Would you say, yeah, that's a great plan, do that? <laughs> Probably not, right? Because if you only drive once or twice a month when you're a brand new driver, it's gonna be a really long time before you're confident, right? Because it's gonna feel like every time you get behind the wheel of the car, it's like your first time, right? Now, once you've been driving a while, uh, we got Lacey who just had surgery, so she's probably not gonna be driving for a couple of weeks. But if she's been driving a while and she takes a couple of weeks off and gets behind the wheel of the car, after about five minutes, 
she's going to be just fine because she's got all the experience behind her. So we suggest that in your first month or two of business, you kind of count it as your, your training period. And, you know, try doing two shows a week. They can be live shows or virtual shows. That's the magic number. Nobody could tell me when I knew, when I was new, why it was the magic number. They just said it was. So I said, okay, I want to be successful. I'm jumping in on actions. And I jumped in with that. But now after I've been doing this a while, I realized the reason why it's the magic number is probably because of three things. Number one, it's not too overwhelming. Even if they're both live shows, um, it's still maybe an eight to 10 hour work week. Okay. Cause these parties don't take that long. Um, two shows a week is also magic because it gives you enough practice. It makes you that confident and skilled driver. Just like when you're learning how to drive, it's not enough just to go to driver's ed and listen to the classes. You know, you got to get behind the wheel of the car. It's really the only way to learn. And really the same is true with this. You just got to pack your hands and, and get your thoughts in front of people, whether it's live or virtual. So it gives people enough practice. And the third reason why it's magic is, well, it's math, not magic. Okay. So you guys want to see what two shows a week could mean to you? Here's what it could mean in the month of March. If you did eight parties in the month of March with a $500 show average, now the national show average is 641. So we're going to go with a conservative number of 500. If you did two shows a week at a $500 show average, that's $4,000 in sales. Now, we have a sliding scale commission rate. At the $4,000 level, you're making 25%. So that's $1,000 worth of income. Now, do you guys know about PC dollars? PC dollars are to Pampered Chef, like what Disney dollars are to Disney. You'll find all the details on PC University. You would also earn 300 PC dollars, plus 3,000 trip points, and it's still early in the year. If you're thinking, I don't know if I can earn a trip, you can, you got plenty of time. And um, this month for selling 750, we earn um, an extra 25 uh, sprint catalogs. I don't know what the bonus will be in March, but there'll be something. Plus your sign on bonus. If you signed on in February, you get um, $200 worth of free products. Okay, that's all for doing two parties a week. Can you believe that? Eight to 10 hour work week, you could be looking at all of that. Who's do like we have to do we have to meet a minimum quota every month to stay yeah. active? Uh, to stay active, to be active, you have to submit 150 in sales. If you're okay. not active in a month, just means you're not active. You're not fired. You set your goals. Gotcha. Yep. Okay. And so active meaning like you get the 20% um, discount. Discount? Okay. Yep. Gotcha. Yep. And uh, yeah, things like that. Yep. So, um, but what would you guys do? with an extra thousand dollars a month coming in from Pampered Chef. Anybody want to share what they do if they made a thousand dollars in the month of March? Pay some bills. Pay some bills. I'm guessing you're paying your bills now though, right? <laughs> so would you get ahead on your bills? Yeah, probably. Okay, that's good. Would anybody save for a trip? or pay down credit card debt to get rid of credit card debt? Yeah. I don't think I've had credit card debt since I was in this business nine months. Got out of credit card debt and haven't had it since. You can do that here, absolutely. And you can do it very part-time. And again, eight parties, they don't all have to be live parties. They can be virtual parties. So if you've got a few minutes to hop on Facebook each day, you can definitely do a blend of parties that would bring you to that number eight. But that's just in your first month of business. Let's talk about, I said that it was that two shows a week, um, part of the reason why it, it was considered the magic number is math, not magic. So this is part of the math, but here's the other part of the math. Um, Pampered Chef did extensive research. This isn't numbers I pulled out of the air. You see on the first line here, it says, if we're doing eight shows and we see, and we can see them virtually or we can see them live, about 10 people per show, that's 80 people per month. 80 people per month that we're probably gonna come in contact with. 
Now, Pepper Chef did research. They say one out of every six to eight people that we talk to, either live or we chat with them via text or Facebook message, about six out of eight will schedule a party of their own. So that's about 10 to 12 parties. No, not all the parties that we book are gonna hold on the originally scheduled date, okay? So you can imagine if you book 10 or 12 the next month, you'll probably hold about eight again. If you book about 10 parties then in, in April, you'll probably hold about eight, okay? So this pace will give you what we call a self-sustaining calendar. That means you're not gonna be doing parties one month and then thinking, oh, where are my next parties gonna be? Your parties are gonna come from your parties. So I always tell people, whatever number of parties you'd like to do in a month, you know, take that number, add two to accommodate for any postponements or cancellations, and schedule that many in a 30-day period. And then work those parties and you'll get that probably enough parties that following month to keep you going, okay? Then there's what's called the one-third, one-third, one-third principle, and that's this. We're going to see those 80 people at every show. Um, if we say, to, if we do a little Q&A round or something during our shows, both live and virtual, allowing people to learn a little bit about the business, and then during the checkout, you know, we, we um, offer them information, about a third will say, hmm, yeah, I'm curious enough. I don't know if it's for me, and I don't know if it's for me now, but yeah, I could take some information home. This is interesting. So that's about 25 people per month. Of those 25, when you follow up with them and say, hey, would you like to talk further? About a third of them will say, yeah, I'm curious enough to want to talk to you more about this, or more to your director about this. That's about eight people a month. And of those eight, about a third will say, yeah, I want to give this a try. This is a good time for me. I like what I'm hearing. I want to go for it. That's about two people per month. How many of you wouldn't mind finding two team members every month just out doing, doing your shows? <laughs> yeah, do you guys know what it's in it, what's in it for you? Um, you get 100 PC dollars, 100 Pamper Chef dollars every time you sponsor a new um, consultant on your team in your first 90 days of business. Okay, so that if you're sponsoring two people per month, that's an extra 200 PC dollars every single month. You also get a raise. Is that only if they sub? Is that only if they submit uh, so yeah, much they, as they do have to submit at least a couple parts. Yeah, get the hundred PC dollars. They have to, I believe, submit. <laughs> then um, after that, if you and the people that you sponsor are active, you're submitting at least 150 in sales every month. You earn with your first um, team member a one percent increase in your own personal sales. Um, you also, uh, with your second person, you get a 2% increase in your own personal sales and the sales of your team. Okay, so for, um, for someone who's, who's a senior consultant, that means you have one active person on your team, it's maybe an extra $30 a month. Yeah, you know, get your nails done. It's not going to change your life that much, but you can, you know, maybe get a little something. When you have two people on your team and you're submitting and they're submitting, it's usually an extra 80 to hundred dollars per month. And all of a sudden, Hey, that's like doing another party that you don't have to do. Okay. Um, but over time that can build up to, to much bigger numbers. So let's talk about, let's say you say, all right, I'm going to give this a try. She said, jump in on actions and between, you know, live shows and virtual shows. I think I can, I think I can do eight and you know, you jump in and start doing that. Let me show you how those numbers pan out 90 days from now. So now we're at March, April, May. This is May, May of 2017, your life in a few months. You're still out doing, you know, your eight parties a month, just two a week on average, with a $500 show average, even though the national show average is 641. So these are pretty conservative numbers. So you're still making $1,000. But now you have a team of six. And we're gonna say they're selling an average of $1,000 per month each. Some are gonna sell more, some are gonna sell less, but to keep the math easy, it's a thousand dollars each. That means your team sales are equal to your sales and the sales of your team, which is ten thousand um, dollars. As a director, because you have at least five people on your team, you're going to make a three percent override, which is three hundred dollars. Three percent of those team sales. Plus, you get what's called an activity bonus. 
It's $10 for every active person on your team, so that's $60. So all together now, for still doing about eight parties a month, live and virtual, you're making about $1,360. You've given yourself like a 30% raise in just 90 days. Plus, you've earned a really cool thing called Fast Track, which I will tell you more about, which is a $500 cash bonus. So how would, that, how would you guys like a 30% raise in your first 90 days of business? That'd be pretty cool. Yeah. And let's talk about where you could be in six months, because I like to dream even bigger. Okay, if you're not a numbers person, just let the numbers wash over you and just know that I am a numbers person. <laughs> and then just embrace that bottom line. So you're still out doing eight parties in a month. Only now I'm giving you that national show average of 641. You also got a raise, because when you hit 15,000 in your career without going inactive for two months in a row, you get a raise. So now you're making 27%. So now for those eight parties, you're making $1,382 in just your personal commission. But now let's say you've got 10 people on your team and you might say to me, hey Karen, I've been doing this for six months. If I'm at, you know, seeing an average of two people per month who sign, you know, shouldn't I be higher than that? Well, you know what? We always tell people, you don't have to sign on forever. You can just give a few shows a try and if you don't like it, you don't have to continue. And so some people will just try a show or two and, you know, they'll decide it's not their thing. And that's okay. That's legal, moral, and ethical. So let's say you've got 10 people on your team. You're selling 1,000 each. So now your activity bonus is $100. But you've got one person on your team who said, hey, I can do two shows a week. And they went out and did what you did with the two shows a week and the, and the one-third, one-third, one-third thing. And now they've got a team of their own. Okay? So now you've got what's called organizational sales. That's inclu that includes your personal sales plus your team sales plus your person who became a director as well. She's out, that person's out, you know, out selling 4,000 a month in their team. Your organizational sales are now 24,000. And because you have a director on your team, you're considered an advanced director and your overrides are 4%, which is $960. When you add that to the activity bonus, that means your overrides are 1,060. Okay, you guys raised your hands that, you know, you could use an extra $1,000 a month for doing two parties a week uh, in March. What do you think if your overrides in May were $1,000? How would that feel? That would make your total income over $2,400 for doing two parties a week, you know, eight to 10 hour work week out of your home. What would you guys do with $2,400 of income from Pampered Chef? If you'd already been making a thousand or more along the way and you're caught up on your bills, what would you be doing now? Go on a trip. Go on a trip, where would you go? Where would you like to go? Go to Ireland. Oh. oh, I've been to Ireland. It's great. Definitely go to Ireland. And get, um, when you rent the car, get the, get the non-deductible thing. Like, yeah, no deductible because you're going to wreck the car. Then the roads are really narrow and they have shale on either side. <laughs> Zero dollar deductible. That's what you get. Okay. So go to Ireland. What would other people do if you're making $2,500, $2,400 a month from Camper Chef? I save money for my dream house. Save for your dream house. Okay. All right. So how long would it take you to kind of get the money squirreled away that you need? I, geez, you're the numbers person, Karen. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how big your house is or how fancy your house is. <laughs> Well, we got to buy the land first, but it wow. would be, it would be quick work with yeah, making that kind of money. Work, right? Right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. And this would put you uh, into the bracket of earning fast track, fast track. Um, I hate the name of it, or I have a love hate relationship with the name because people think oh, fast track, I must have to work really fast and really hard. Oh no. Fast refers to the results that you can get, not the pace with which you need to work. 
two, two parties a week on average, live and virtual, is not a neck-breaking case for most people. But if you achieve directorship in your first 90 days, they give you a $500 cash bonus. Don't quit in the next three months and, and you know, remain as a director. They'll give you another $500 cash bonus. And um, if you find one person on your team that wants to go for that, and they do, and they become a director before you hit your, or by the time you've been in business six months, you get another $1,000 cash bonus. So that's up to an extra $2,000 above and beyond the income that I showed you. So there is money to be made at Pampered Chef. And let me tell you, this year is gearing up to be an amazing year. Um, unemployment in my state is about 3.5%, which is amazingly low. And just in the last year or so, finally, people are starting to get not just employment, but meaningful employment. Okay, so all of a sudden they're talking about a housing boom because they said all these 20 somethings to early 30 somethings who've been at home with their parents trying to wait for the economy to get better. Finally, now all these people are, are moving out in droves. They have kitchens and we're here to help them fill it. Cooking is a very in thing right now, right? It's very in vogue. Uh, farm to table very in vogue, right? We've got a brand new product line right now to unveil to the world, it's great. So yeah, so we are, if you've ever wanted, wanted to be in a ground floor opportunity, you are, because oh my gosh, with uh, what the home office is doing with our product line and with um, uh, all the ways that um, we are now much more engaging in um, uh, social media, Oh my goodness, just hold on for the ride because it's gonna be a good one. You guys are in the right place at the right time. So before I move on to the skills that are needed for success, um, any questions or comments so far? Okay, then we'll move on, but feel free to, um, to jump in along the way. Okay, so the skills needed um, to have that one-third, one-third, one-third thing um, happen in your life. The great thing is there aren't a lot of skills. There are six, but really only four of them you need to uh, concentrate on when you're new in the business. Skill number one is prospecting. Prospecting is getting those initial foundational parties in place. For me, quite honestly, that was the yuckiest part of my business. <laughs> Once I got to the shows, I had a blast. I got sales, I got bookings, I got people interested in the business. But those initial parties where I had to just kind of reach out to people I know to get those initial parties in place, that was the most challenging for me. So if you are feeling this, if you're not feeling that way, good for you. If you are feeling that way, don't worry. You don't have to live the rest of your life that way. Um, you know, once those parties are in place and you have the parties that you want in place, it's um, then the hosts fill the room with our next group of consultants, or excuse me, next group of customers. So prospecting is getting, getting the parties in place. Host coaching. Now once the parties are in place, we wanna work with our hosts. We wanna be partners with them to give them the ideas um, and the inspiration that they need to have a great party. Once we're at the parties, we wanna inform or generate interest in our products and programs. Okay, we want to get people excited about our products. We want get, to get people excited about having a party of their own. Okay, we don't beg people to buy from us. We don't beg people to have parties. We don't beg people to join our team. We want to inspire them. And then the fourth skill is inviting. So when you're at your parties, whether they're live or virtual, you might post some things at a virtual party or you might present something from the, you know, at, at uh, your live shows about the business opportunity, about host, about host, co um, excuse me, about hosting a show of their own. Um, but it's not until you, you talk with them one-on-one -on -one, and that's the inviting part. We invite people one-on-one. -on -one. So what do you think about getting some friends together for a party of your own? Then once you have people who are interested in the business, there's what we call the interview, which was really just a conversation about the business. You don't need to worry about that when you're new, because when you have someone who's interested, you're just gonna say, how about we, if we talk to um, the trainer or the person who got me started in the business, she's been doing this forever, and then she can um, get all your questions answered. 
and the strong start. That's where we help them get those initial parties in place and kind of let them know how to get the ball rolling. So you don't need to know about those last two um, skills. So what we're going to be talking about tonight is prospecting and host coaching. And then when you go to the cooking show training night, or if you're not near me and you can't go to that, when you go to view a show of the season consultant or go to watch them on PC University, um, you'll see how, how we inform and invite at our shows. So tonight is about prospecting and host coaching. Okay, prospecting. Um, start with the people you know. I, I, you know. I remember being new and they said to me, Karen, we get bookings from two places, from people we know and from people we don't know. Usually we start with the people we know. Okay, so there's what we call a Frank's list or a launch list, you'll find it on PC University. Frank stands for, it's a, it's a thing that stands, the F stands for friends, the R stands for relatives, A stands for acquaintances, N stands for nut neighbors, K stands for people you know through your kids or people that you knew when you were a kid, and S, is your spouse's Frank. So your spouse's friends, spouse's relatives, et cetera. Okay, so you want to, to get as big a list going as you can. You can also, you know, scroll through your phone and see all the people that, are, that, that you have as contacts on your phone. Look at who you know through Facebook, okay? This is, this, this is your list of people that you know. I always recommend that we start with kickoff parties. You can do, um, some people start off with two live virtual parties, like one on a Friday night, one on a Saturday or Sunday afternoon, send out one invitation with both dates. Or you can do one live uh, kickoff party and one virtual kickoff party, okay? So that way you can invite your friends to your first parties. At these kickoff parties, um, you can be the consultant earning the commission and the host earning the free products, okay? Oh, sorry, I just, got, I just got a little alert. It says, an order has been placed on my website. Love that, okay, sorry. <laughs> um, so you start off with your, with, with your kickoff parties. You wanna pick those dates, and I know a lot of you have done a kickoff party already, but I know some of you haven't yet. You pick, you pick out the kickoff date first. Get that in your calendar. And then you look at your launch list and you pick about 20 people on there that you know fairly well. We call, I call it your top 20 list. And you reach out to those 20 people and you say, oh my gosh, you know, I'm so excited. I'm getting started with the Pampered Chef. And I'm looking for people who want to gather some friends together, either live or virtual, depending on what you're booking. And, um, you know, you can earn free products by doing so. What do you think? And notice I didn't say, do you want to do that? Because saying, do you want to host is a yes or no uh, response. If you say, what do you think? Now they're going to tell you what they're thinking. Some people are going to say yes right away. Some people are going to say solid no right away. Some are going to say, well, I'm not sure because I don't know if I know enough people. I don't know if my house is big enough. I don't know if I have the time. Those are the three big hesitations we hear very commonly from people. But if you let them know, hey, you know, it doesn't matter if you know a lot of people. I need big shows and little shows. I really just need practice. It's kind of like learning how to drive a car. I just need to get behind the wheel. You know when you're a new driver driving around an empty parking lot on a Tuesday afternoon on a church parking lot? That's good practice. Same thing when you're new. So you let people know. It doesn't matter whether you have a big show or a little show. You're really helping me out by having a party in my first month because I need practice. Assure them that every party is helpful. Because otherwise they'll think, oh my goodness, if I don't have a great party, then Jen's not gonna get off to a strong start and it's gonna be all my fault, right? So you wanna let them know. Big parties, little parties, they're all really great when, they're, when you're early in your business, okay? So, um, oh sorry, another order just came in on my website. <laughs> it pops up in the middle of my screen. I don't know, can you guys see that? No. No, okay, good, okay, so I won't say anything more. Um, Okay, so then um, if you say, so if they don't know enough people, it doesn't matter whether it's a big crowd or a little crowd. If they say, I don't know if my house is big enough, how many people do you think you can fit in there? Oh, probably not more than four or five, they might say. Say, that's great. Let's do that. You could be one of my small shows. It's okay. 
Um, or, and, and then once we get to the host coaching, you'll see how you can branch out and give them more ideas and they'll probably end up having a better show than they ever thought. Um, or if they say, I'm not sure if I have enough time, you know, you let them know this isn't planning a wedding. This is just having a few friends over just so you can practice on them. Okay. Of the 20, probably three will say yes to a party in your first month of business. Okay. So I just want you guys to know that because that's good. If three say yes, that's fantastic. So you say, now the other 17 are feeling a little guilty. They just told you no. So then you say, well, another thing you can do is come to my launch party. And if you could bring two or three people I've never met before, because my goal is to get the word out beyond my family and friends. You know, so do you know anybody who loves to cook, loves Pampered Chef, or just needs a fun night out? You know, how about coming to my launch party and bringing a few friends? They're so relieved that you're not twisting their arm to have a party. They're usually, oh, okay, yeah, I'll come to that. But statistically, a little less than half are actually going to be available on the day that you're having your kickoff. So of those 17 remaining people, maybe seven or eight of them say, I'll come to your kickoff party with a friend or two. So you still have about 10 people left who've now said no to a show and sorry, I can't come to your kickoff party. So then you can say to them, well, what do you think about just doing a virtual party? on Facebook, or maybe taking a catalog around for a couple of days to see if anybody you know needs anything. Now, these are your top 20 people, so most of them will say yes to something. Probably five of them, of the, of the remaining people, will say yes to either a catalog show or a virtual show, and probably a couple others will, will at least order. They'll feel so guilty for saying no to all those things. They'll be like, but I'll order from you. Okay, and, and you're just reaching out to 20 people that you know fairly well, and then let the floodgates open and invite everyone from your, from your um, Frank's list um, and your who do you know list to your, to your launch party. Um, and then usually at your launch party, you get a couple more bookings. So now you've got your, your live and your virtual launch parties. You get the three people out of the top 20 who say yes to show, that's five, plus a couple more who say, uh, three or four more who say yes to virtual shows or, or catalog parties. And then you get a couple of bookings from your kickoff party. Does that sound like more than eight? <laughs> yeah. That's how you work it, to get off to a strong start. And then you want. You don't have to be calling your friends every month going, how about now? You want to have a party now? <laughs> you have a plan in place that's going to give you enough. So now you go to those parties, you're going to see people there. And when people are there and they see our products and they try them out um, at a live party or they see our products um, through videos and posts on a Facebook party, enough of them will want to have a party of their own when they find out what's in it for them if they have the party. Okay. So prospecting. Now, after that, we get people, we get, uh, we can get bookings from people that we don't know. Um, you can take your survey slips and go out and about with them. Say, I'm a brand new camper chef consultant in the area. I'm having a drawing um, to, to celebrate the launch of my new business. It's free to enter. Would you like to be in the drawing? You use the survey slips that come in your kit and you, those survey slips ask for their contact information and would they like information about the business opportunity, having a party of their own, fundraisers and bridal showers so they can check it off. And if someone checks off yes or maybe about wanting information, you can follow up with them. You can take it to the bank. You can take it to your dentist's office, your doctor's office. Take it to your hairdresser. Have everybody in the salon fill one of these out. To the yoga studio, to your gym, wherever you go, where there's people maybe that you don't know super well, but you see them enough. Okay, you can get leads that way. And then you can branch out to people that you don't know at all. Um, you can ask for referrals from people that you know. You know, if someone, if they're one of your top 20 people and they're not having a party or even taking a catalog around, you could say, do you know anybody who might want to get some free stuff by having some friends over? My mother has never had a party for me, not in 21 years, never had a <laughs> party, but she has referred people to me. So that's nice. Okay, and fairs. Be on the lookout for fairs in your area. You can meet a lot of people in a very short period of time. Okay, at fairs, you know, you set up a display with products 
I usually demo one product per fair, you know, like the spinalizer, the food chopper, some really catchy or menu food processor or something. Yeah, so you can meet a lot of people that way. Okay, now I suggest if you're brand new, start with the people you know, focus on a huge launch list and 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 with the strategies of the kickoff party like I like I recommended. And then after that, you can branch out to the acquaintances with the survey slips and ask your director about fares and things like that. Okay, so before we move on to host coaching, any questions about prospecting? Anybody hear any hesitations from people you know and you just didn't know what to say? They said, I'd love to have a party, but, or I, I, I really can't help you because, and they had a, a hesitation that you didn't know how to respond to. Okay. okay. Do keep in touch with your director. Let us know what you're hearing. Okay, just the other day I had someone, a uh, consultant, um, got in touch with me. She says, oh, I'm doing this virtual show and all these people said they were gonna order. Now none of them are ordering. The host is really bummed out. I'm kind of upset. I gave her some words to say that she, um, sent through Facebook message to her host and within 24 hours 300 over $300 more in orders came in okay I'm not a very bright person but I've been doing I'm a plethora of otherwise useless information except if you're a pamper chef consultant and then I'm brilliant no, I'm just kidding but I have a lot of experience whatever you're hearing from people whatever you might be struggling with right now believe me I've been there, done that. And this is what I mean about keeping in touch with your director so we can whiz you right through the learning curve. Um, back when I got started 20 something years ago, uh, there wasn't so much training around. We got a box of products and a pat on the back and good luck. Um, now there's so much more training available. And there, there's people here who've got a lot of experience. So let us know what you're hearing. There are solutions for almost everything. Okay, so definitely keep in touch. This is the monthly tracker. You will find it on um, your team's Facebook group. You will also find it on Consultants Corner. If you want to be in one of the top 10% in the company, then you are going to want to fill this out religiously. And after every few shows, take a picture of it and send it to your director. Okay, so whatever your first full month is, if you want to put March in here, um, and then in here you would write down all the, the shows that you have, virtual and live shows. You can do more than eight if you have more than eight. So you're going to write in all the shows, the names of the hosts, and the date. So those are the shows booked. Then we're looking at how many did you book and how many were held on the originally scheduled date. And then we're looking at, you're, you're filling in how many were in attendance. Okay, um, how many took information home about the business? How many talked with you or the director again? How many signed? How many bookings did you get? Um, I'm surprised this on there. And when it says show attendance, this is how many orders. Um, you could write a, a slash of how many were there and how many ordered. Because you need to find, um, especially with those virtual shows, at the live shows, most people order, but on the virtual parties, you wanna find what your ratio is. How many people clicked attended versus how many are going? Okay, now, why do we want you to do this? Well, as uh, directors, as trainers, we have quite a bit of experience with Pampered Chef. However, we are not mind readers, we don't have crystal balls. And, and so, we can't be at all your shows. We can't be at your shows. So this gives us a snapshot of what's going well for you in your business and what you might be struggling with. Almost everybody comes to this business with certain parts of it that just fall very naturally into place. And every single person that I've ever met has had parts of this business that hasn't fallen very naturally into place. However, every part of this business is learnable. And each one of these columns corresponds with one of those skills that we talked about. So how many shows you have here comes down to prospecting. How many shows would you like to have? How many do you have? If there's a discrepancy, your director knows. Let's talk about prospecting, okay? 
this column, how many shows are booked versus held on the originally scheduled date? And what is the attendance like? That comes down to host coaching. That's what we're gonna be talking about next. How many people took information home about the business? That reflects how well did you ins um, inspire people to want more, you know, have the informing part that we talked about. Same with bookings, how well did you inform people about, about um, having a, a party of their own? Things like that. So we know as directors what column reflects what skill. So as directors, we are not your bosses. We are not here to critique you or to tell you what to do or to you know, you know, give you an evaluation or anything like that. We are here to help you have the strongest business possible. So filling this out and sending this information to your director is so we can figure out, first of all, what parts of the business are falling very naturally into place for you so that we can cheer you on and say, yay, good going. But also we can say, hey, let's talk about this skill because I bet with a little bit of tweaking, these numbers can change quickly. Um, there was a month in my business when I was brand new. My show average was $208. It was awful. And I had been working on my show, what I was doing at my show over and over and over again, and nothing was changing. Well, that's because I was focusing on what I was doing at my show when what I really needed to do was focus on my host coaching. And when I changed that almost overnight, I went from a $208 show average to over a $500 show average back when the national show average was about 300 25 or something like that. It made a huge difference almost overnight. Okay, so that's what this is designed for to help you tweak the parts of your business that need a little tweaking. Okay, how many of you are like, I'm filling this out. I will, I will fill this out and I will send it to my director. I don't see any hands. What is this <laughs> called again? This is called the monthly tracker. And how do I find it in Consultant Corner? Uh, if you type in Monthly Tracker, or if actually, if you go to PC University, it should be in one of the first um, sections there. Otherwise, okay. you can go onto your team Facebook group and type in Monthly Tracker there, and it should be under Files. Okay. Okay? All right. Now, on to host coaching, which is like my favorite subject. I love to talk about host coaching. Um, host coaching, I like to say, is where we earn our money and the show is where we pick up the paycheck. Okay? Um, yeah, host coaching. This is how we make our money. All right? And before we get into the how to's or the what's of um, host coaching, there's a few things I want to talk about. First of all, show of hands, um, how many of you, or actually just yell out, when you schedule a party, what is one of the first things you do? Someone says, okay, I want to have a party on the 15th. What's one of the first things you do? Write down the date. Right to, yeah, put it on your calendar, right? Because if you don't write it on the calendar, are you going to remember to go? I'm not. Yeah, I don't do anything that isn't on my calendar. I need that calendar, okay? So schedule your host coaching just like you schedule your parties so that you don't forget to do it. Now, there are a couple of different ways that you could schedule this. Some people, okay, they say, okay, the party's gonna be on the 15th, and I like to make that um, the, the last connection about three days before, so you count back three days, yep, I'm around on the 12th, and you put a little reminder in your calendar to call that host on that day. And then you say, but you know, I wanna talk two weeks ahead about setting their um, show up on Facebook and getting the word out and who to invite, so you go about two to two and a half weeks before the party and you put a little reminder in your calendar to do that. Um, you need to send out a host packet. So I usually put one reminder. It says send out March host packets. They all went out uh, today. So, you know, you put reminders in your calendar to do things so that you don't forget to do them. Another way that some people organize their host coaching is they say, okay, every Monday, I'm gonna call all my hosts who have parties this week okay if you're doing two parties a week this is two phone calls this is not a lot of time okay so if you've got and then every tuesday they call all their hosts or contact i'm old so when i say call just think contact okay because i'm 50 and all i ever did was call so anyway so um some people say on tuesday i'm going to contact all of my hosts who have parties next week and on Wednesdays, I'm going to contact all my hosts who have parties two and three weeks out. 
And again, if you're doing about two parties a week, this isn't many, many calls. It's here and there. And it doesn't have to be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. It can be whatever fits your schedule. Okay. However you want to schedule it is fine by me. Just schedule it and let your uh, system evolve. If you try something that doesn't work so well, oh, try a new system. Okay. And the next thing when it comes to um, host coaching is I think it's really important to start with the end in mind. In fact, I want you guys to all take out a clean piece of paper and a pen or pencil. Because when you're host coaching, you're thinking about, you know, you want to help your host have the best show possible. So I want you to write down, what is your vision of a perfect show? How many people are there? How many orders are there? Who's there? Um, how many bookings do you get? How many outside orders are there waiting for you? Okay, just start writing things down as much as you can. All right, who wants to share some of the things on their list so far? Hi, Karen, it's Donna, I will. Hi, I guess um, one of the first things that would be most important to me is just that I want people to have fun. I want them to feel relaxed, especially yep. if you're doing it on a weeknight and people have been at work all day. I just think it's important for people to get out and have a good time. Fun, um, good. Maybe learn a new recipe, I think maybe you know, somewhere between eight to 10 guests is probably a reasonable expectation at a party. Mm -hmm. And I think for the host, maybe to be able to get some pre-orders prior to the party. How many would you like? Well, the more the better for, mm -hmm. I, you know, for the host. But, you know, even one or two, I think is successful. Oh, go bigger. <laughs> yeah, one or two. Yeah. Eight, 10. You do it. Think big. We're thinking perfect here. Not, not what's reasonable. Think, think what's your vision. What would you love to, because remember, this is going to help out the host. Right. So our goal is to help the host have the best show possible. Who else has some things on the, on their list? Anybody? Okay. I'll go back to the screen share and I'll show you a list that I came up with many, many moons ago when I was asked to do this. Um, I didn't do it at the training. I went home and they said to expand the list afterwards. So I said, ideally, the show happens on the originally scheduled date that the host has eight to 10 outside or online orders before the party. I love it when the host has one or two names of people who want to host before the party happens. I just had a party the other night. Uh, it's at 960 in sales. The person couldn't come to the party. Um, but uh, I talked with the host about getting outside bookings and she gave me this name. I like to have 15 guests in, in attendance. I like a mixed crowd. I like some people who've never been to a show before and I love some groupies there. Well, um, I like it when two or three people bring a friend that the host didn't invite. Okay, this is huge. Bring a friend. It's only two to three extra people. But if every order is $50, that's an extra $150. It's an extra, you know, uh, in sales. But more importantly, you, this will help you not get stuck in a group of, oh, this eight people, all these coworkers, and then two of them booked, and they invited the same eight people back. And after two or three shows, after three shows, they're like, okay, we've got enough now. And you're like, oh, but I want to still do parties. If you constantly have people bringing friends, you're constantly getting new faces at your parties and you won't dead end. Okay. So definitely. I like it when the show starts on time. I like it when the host has the correct ingredients. I like it when my host has um, some products that she owns out on display. 
I like it when my host does not have too much extra food because then hosting looks like a lot of work and nobody wants to do it. Um, I like when the show closes within a day or two of the party. I like it when the host considers the business. I like it when the past host is in attendance and when there's not too much alcohol. A little bit of wine is good. Five margaritas each, not so good. Okay, so that, that was my list. Now this is my list, it doesn't have to be your list. But I do encourage you to think very intentionally about what you would love to see happen at parties. And yes, I love to have fun at my shows. If you go to my shows, you know. I always say, I learned a long time ago, if you're a pamper chef lady and you can't cook, you would better be fun. And I like to have fun at my shows. And I think when there's a, a larger crowd there, it's more fun. If there's three people there, there's a lot of pressure because they're thinking, oh my goodness, there's only three of us here, I'm gonna spend a lot of money. Um, but also when you have a certain number of people in the room, you don't worry about the sales. You know what's gonna happen. You don't worry about the bookings. You know what's gonna happen. And you know what? You're gonna find people who wanna join your team just by, just by sheer number. Okay, so that was my vision of an ideal party. So I keep that in mind when I am working with my hosts, okay? And I also have a mantra. I want to inspire and inform. I learned many years ago, if, if we want someone to do something, uh, in order for anybody to take action on something, they have to have the will and the skill. They have to want to do it and they have to know how to do it. Okay, so inspire so that they want to do it and inform so that they know how to do it. So that's my mantra, inspire, get them excited, and then inform, let them know how to have it happen. And we want to partner with our hosts, okay? We don't want to just give them homework assignments and say, go do it. We want to work with them to help them have the best show possible, okay? And on the website and on the um, your team Facebook group, you will find a host information and checklist. And what I suggest doing is print this out, pick one to use as your master. Um, I like it as a jumping off point, but um, it's just bullets. And if you're just talking with your host and going through bullets, oh my goodness, then as Donna was saying, all of a sudden it's not so fun, it can feel like a homework assignment. Also, some of the ideas I share aren't on here. Um, so you might want to take some of the ideas I share, jot them down on notes, but then put them somewhere on this host coaching checklist. If you're like me and you're not too much a perfectionist, you can just write them in the margins and stick this checklist in a, in a page protector and have it handy when you're talking with your hosts. If you're a perfectionist and you don't like just handwriting all over the place, you can just type up something um, afterwards based on what you see here and what you learn and come up with a list that, that, that you can have or a host coaching document that you can have when you're talking with your hosts. However you wanna do that is fine by me, okay? Um, so contact number one. Oh, actually, before I get to this, you guys all have host packets that come in your kit, correct? You found those? They are not specific to a month because they, Pamper Chef makes all these kits and they don't know when you're going to order your kit. So um, the host packet has, it comes with a couple catalogs in it and the show planner and um, invitations and some information about the business. What we need to do is go on to Consultants Corner in the middle tab which is something about um, incentives and something or other. And you click on that middle tab and you can scroll down to host special, guest special. So, you, so if, a, if a host is having a party in the month of March, you go to the host special, click on March, print it out. Okay, because there's some products that a host in the month of March, they get to choose one of them at 60% off. So you want to make sure the host has that sheet. Then right under that in the same area, you go to guest special and you print out the flyer for that. Because for a $75 order, a guest can get a free product. You wanna make sure every host has a copy of that because many of their orders will come from people who aren't at the party. So you wanna make sure the host has that to circulate. And then I also include um, the outside order form. It's on the same area as the um, guest special, just a little bit lower on the same screen and you print out a few outside order forms. Okay, and then you tuck that into the host packets and then the host packets are ready to go. And contact number one, 
Um, in the beginning, when you're prospecting people you know, I say, if, you, if you've got the time and the people live close by, say to them, I've got a packet for you. I'd love to come by and drop, drop it by when you've got about 10 minutes. Have a cup of tea, talk with them live if possible. Um, I always take three host packets with me to every single party because I want to book three parties from every show I do. And then I can hand them out, which is nice because I don't have to mail them to people, which can be expensive. Okay, so hand the host packet to the people. I usually say to them, you know, when they, I'm, you know, talking to them as they're placing their order, if they schedule a party, I give them a host packet, I write the date on the front of it. And then I say, do you need to leave right away or can I um, talk with you afterwards because I kind of want to walk you through uh, briefly what's in here. And so I'll gather the people around who have scheduled parties, they've all got host packets. I very briefly walk them through it. The thing I'm focusing on is getting them to go home and start a list of people to invite. I tell them about the Franks list, just like I told you guys. I tell them the most important thing to a successful party is over, over inviting, because we are a busy culture, and not everybody that, um, that you invite is gonna be able to come to the party. So I say, just go home, work on two lists. One, a list of everything you wanna have in your kitchen by the time we're done with this party, because I'm gonna make it my mission to help you get those items, and then make a list to everybody you know who eats. And then I show them there's some catalogs in here. I tell them there's some information about the business. I say most people who become consultants were hosts first. Okay, and then I show them the host special, the, the guest special and the outside order form. And I explain how people can place outside orders either using the paper or clicking on a link that I'm gonna be supplying with them. And then before they leave that night, I say, when do you have 10 minutes in the next couple of days that we can talk? Because I wanna share some ideas that are gonna help you knock it out of the park with your party. And I schedule it and I write down the date and time on the host packet and I write it in my calendar. Okay? So this doesn't take a tremendous amount of time, but working with intention makes a big difference. Who wants to be my pretend host? Anybody? <laughs> Nobody wants to be my pretend host? Hey, Cindy, how about you? Can I put you on the spot since you're experienced? Is she there? Okay, now I'm unmuted, yes. Oh, there you are, okay. So Cindy, <laughs> you're gonna be my pretend host. Okay. Did, we, um, did I tell you we were gonna do this ahead? No. No, so you're just gonna Respond as any host would. We did not, this is not scripted. This is gonna be live and you be an average host, okay? Okay, I'll be average. <laughs> okay, so we were at a party last night or the night before and you scheduled a party from March. I sent you home with a host packet and I said just what I said now. So you were gonna come up with a list of things you'd love to get and start on your list and we scheduled the time to talk, okay? Okay. All right, so ring, 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 because I always do that first contact via phone. If I can't do it live, talking right then and there, it's over the phone. It's a conversation. The rest can be via Facebook message or text or email, but the first conversation is a live conversation, okay? So ring, ring, ring. Hello. Hey, Cindy, it's Karen Batty with The Pampered Chef. How are you? Oh, good, Karen. How are you? Oh, I'm great. So, hey, have you been dreaming about Pampered Chef since, since you saw me last? A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And you know what? You picked a great month to have a party. Oh, my gosh. In March, we've got the new products coming up. <laughs> Cannot wait. Cannot wait to help to, to bring them to your party. You're going to be one of the first ones to get to see the new stuff. So, um, so do you have that packet that I gave you the other night? I do. Yes, yes. Fantastic. Great. So, first of all, you know, I think you can tell by my shows that I absolutely love what I do and I have a lot of fun. But I gotta tell you, one of the things that brings me the greatest joy is to help my hosts get what they want from their parties. So what are like the top three things you do not want your kitchen to be without by the time we're done? Well, I really love that rock crock. That rock crock, showed. oh good, so do I. Gotta have the rock crock, okay. Um, let's see, I could, use, uh, I could use some new stoneware. Stoneware, okay. Yeah. And um, 
I don't, I don't know. Um, maybe, maybe some, you know, some scrapers or something like that. Scrapers Nothing fancy. Nice. And but, were you, um, were you eyeing that um, spiralizer? Oh yeah. Yeah, I thought so. I thought you were kind of eyeing that. Okay. All right. So I'm just kind of quickly looking at the math here. Um, the spiralizer, well, just as long as you have a party in March, that, that's a 60% off item, I believe. So you can have that. How much is that going to be then? Um, I don't know, but I can look one too. <laughs> I don't have my post packet in front of me that I usually have here, but pretend I okay. didn't answer to that because I usually have that. Okay. <laughs> okay, so then I'm looking at stoneware and rock rock. So how would you feel about a free rock rock and maybe two pieces of stoneware and half off? Well, that wouldn't be too bad. <laughs> okay. So, and you know what? I'm just going to tell you right now, we have a combo going that's going to be in the new catalog with the rock rock with the new um, slow cooker base. You're going to want that. Mm. So um, in order to get that for free and some stone red half off, we're probably looking to aim at like a thousand dollar party. So how does that sound to you? Want to, want to aim for that? That, that sounds really hard, Karen. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> You know what, Cindy, most of my hosts say, uh, yeah, that sounds like a lot. But do you know, it's, it's about my show average. Is it? Yeah. And you know what? If you've got about 15 orders that are about $60 a piece, that's a $900 show right there. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. So it's, I know it sounds like a lot, but really it's, it's very manageable, especially if we work together. And I would love to help you make that happen. You want to? Okay. okay. We'll give it a shot. We'll give it a shot. Hey, it, can, it can't hurt to try, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So, Cindy, uh, oh my gosh, you're, gonna, you're just going to love this stuff. The new, the new rock rock with the, with the slow cooker thing it is just amazing. Okay. So, when we talked last night, I, I had said to go home and just kind of come up with a list of like everyone you know who eats. Did you get a chance to get started on that list? I got a couple names. I mean, I only, I don't know a ton, a ton of people, really. Yeah. Okay. All right. So if you um, take the, the folder that I gave you and flip it over to the back, you'll see a place to kind of list the names. How many do you think are on your list so far? Maybe about 10, 15, something okay. like that. 10 to 15 so far. Okay. Not bad. That's okay. So remember I said for a $900 show, that's like 15 orders, 15, 15 orders at about uh, $60 a Piece. Yeah, my friends like me, but I don't know how if they like me that much. <laughs> well, let me tell you, I don't want to scare you, but in order to get about 15 orders, it usually requires inviting about three times that many people. Okay? Okay. So we need to, we need to, but, and I know you've got 10 to 15, don't think, oh my gosh, I'm sunk. Because that's just a starting off point, and this is what I get the big bucks for, helping you. Okay? Okay. Do you find that I can usually help my hosts add at least 10 to 20 names onto their list in just a couple of minutes by brainstorming? So do you want to see if I can help you do the same? Sure. Okay, great. So, um, Cindy, can you tell me who's on your list so far? I don't need names. I just need to know kind of how you know them. Um, some past coworkers, uh, a couple of friends. Um, unfortunately, most of my family is out of town, so okay. they can't come to the party. Okay. My mom might drive up here, but probably not. Okay. So you've got coworkers, friends, family. Any, yep. Anybody else on there? No, uh, that's it so far. Okay. So let's talk about your coworkers. Um, did you invite all of your coworkers or just like a select few of female coworkers that you think would want to come to a Pampa Chef party? Probably more that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I thank you for your honesty. Um, but let me tell you, you know, you never know who might want to come to a Pampa Chef party. Cindy, I always tell people, think of it like you, you wanted to sell a car. If you had a car for sale, you wouldn't just tell your three best friends. You'd be like, hey, hey, anybody need, know anybody who might want a car because I got one for sale, okay? Because they don't need to know and love you to buy your car. They just need to need a car, right? So you kind of want to think of it like that. You never know who might really love Pamper Chef and might really need Pamper Chef, who might have a wedding coming up that they need a gift for, or whose father loves to barbecue, and we've got some great new barbecue tools coming out. So... How do you feel about inviting all of your coworkers, male, female, ones that you would think would love to come and ones that you're absolutely certain never in a million years would darken your door? Um, because you know what? You're never going to, you know, you're never going to hurt anybody's feelings by inviting. Oh, uh, all right.
right, I'll invite him. Okay. We'll see. Awesome. Yeah, it can't hurt, right? And um, if you added the names of people, if you added all your coworkers on there, um, including, I know you said you, you changed your jobs recently. So if you include current and your, your other job and invited all of them, how many names would that add on to your list? Probably about 25. Oh, awesome. That was easy. Yeah. Yeah, great. Okay. So then you said you invited some friends. Did mm -hmm. you invite all of your friends or oh, sure. um, just the ones who are female, local, that might want to come to a Pampa Chat party? I invited my local friends because I was just <laughs> thinking about the party. Yeah. <laughs> well, Cindy, did you know that at most of my parties, anywhere from the third to half of the orders are placed by people who can't make it? Really? Yeah. And I just, I just messaged you a little while ago through Facebook with a link for your show. So you can text that to people. So if you included every, all your friends, male, female, young, old, people who love to cook, people who hate to cook, local as well as long distance people, because anybody who clicks on that link and shops, it's going to your party. How many um, names do you think would be added onto the list? Oh, Probably at least another 25 or 30, I'm thinking, okay. off the top of my head. Yeah, awesome, great. And then family, I know you said only your mom would drive up. How many other family members do you have that, that you might um, send that link to? Probably not many. I have a very small family. Um, that's just my brothers. And okay. So maybe two or three more? Yeah, that's it. Okay. Um, do you have a significant other? I do. Yeah, does he have a job? He does. <laughs> yeah. So you know what? And you can bring a catalog to work. Guess what? I gave you a few. So you can send a catalog with him to work too. Okay. Yeah. Um, and, you know, consider people he knows, his friends, his family, his coworkers. Yeah. Do you have any neighbors? Yep. Because <laughs> <laughs> you didn't mention any neighbors. Um, do you know your neighbors well? Well, no, but I, I, I say, hey, neighbor. <laughs> yeah. Here's what I find. Here's what I find. You saw at the party you went to that when you came in, someone gave you a name tag right away, right? Because mm -hmm. I make people do that to points. I put them in charge of things. So got the name tag person. In fact, uh, yeah. So um, everybody gets a name tag. And I find that at most of my parties, most of my hosts say to me, I'd love to know my neighbors better, but I, I don't know them that well. And I say, this is a great opportunity. Because everybody has food in common. It's not like you're going to invite them over and think, what am I going to talk to them about? I don't even know them. They're going to come walking in. I'm going to, I'm going to be there. All the products are going to be set up. Someone's going to give them a name tag. They're going to walk over. We're going to start talking food and cooking because we all have that in common. And I find that um, a lot of the neighbors will come over because they think, oh, wow, I don't know Cindy that well. And she invited me. I bet that means she invited all the neighbors. And then they're excited because, first of all, they get to see the inside of your house because the dining room <laughs> look like since you moved in. And they're thinking, wow, I bet she invited all the neighbors. And so a lot of them will come because they'll think, oh, good, I can meet all the neighbors because everybody I talk to wants to meet their neighbors. But there's, it's, it's so awkward. If, you, if you're not in the same life circumstance, your paths aren't going to cross. But you know what? If, with a Pampa Chef party, it can make all the paths cross. So if you just, um, you notice that I, I also um, gave you some postcard invitations. If you just filled those out and pop those into your neighbor's um, doors, how many neighbors do you feel like you could give those to? A couple, a couple. I, okay. I don't like the ones directly next door, but that's You don't a have to invite them if you don't like them. If they're new, <laughs> don't invite them. Well, although okay, you, good. Could, you could tell them you're having a catalog show and see if they want to order. <laughs> Okay, so you could maybe add two to three more on. Okay, you know what? I'm doing the math quickly here. 50, 60, 70, 80. I think we've got about 90 people on the list. What? Yeah, you went from 10 to 15 to 90. Look at that. Yay! There you go, me. Cindy, <laughs> you've just done the hardest part. The hardest part is figuring out who am I going to let know about this. And you've done it. You are now on track. You've done the first step. Uh, um, to being on track for a thousand dollar party and getting that rock rock for free and you know what you might even end up with a, enough to get a stone for free as well but at least a half off that's pretty all strange, right awesome right, right? Um, Cindy do you want to know another way to really knock it out of the park with this with the show 
Sure. Okay. Now that I found out that I know 90 people, I mean, the sky's the limit. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Do you know, are there two people who love you dearly, who would absolutely love to see you get that raw crop for free? And, I could, um, and, and, and might want to help you out. I'm sure I can come up with two people who like me that much. Who, who loves you dearly and would do anything for you? Um, my friend Amy would probably do anything for me. Okay. And, hmm, I think here. Your mom, maybe? My mom might do anything for me. Okay. Yeah, she probably would. She's no, we're not, we're not talking big favors here. So you just okay, call, all right. you know, you call your mother, text Amy, yep. you know, whatever. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I'm having a paper chip party and I really, really, really want this rock clock for free, but I don't know if I know enough people to get it for free. Um, hey, if I gave you a catalog, would you mind taking it to work with you to see if anybody you know needs anything? You think you could say that to Amy? I mom? could say to Amy, yeah. My mom's retired, but... Your mom's retired. Okay. Yep. Then maybe you could say this to your mom. Mom, I'm so excited. I'm having a pamper chef party. I really, really, really want a rock crop for free, but I don't know if I know enough people. If I gave you a catalog, would you just kind of take it wherever you go over the next week? Just to see if anybody that you bump into needs anything? Okay. Yeah. Because, um, you know, a lot of retired people, they still go to book club or yoga or have coffee with their friends. So again, yes, friends. you're not asking them for a huge favor. They're going to these places anyway. All they're doing is bringing a catalog with them. And you know what I find, Cindy? Your, your, your friend Amy, will, you'll go into work and you'll be like, hey, I'm having a paper chat party. You may want to come. And if you don't want to come, if you want to flip through the catalog, Amy's going to go and she's going to be like, my friend Cindy is having a paper chat party. <laughs> <laughs> Who's coming with me? Or who needs something? I mean, they go because it, because it benefits you. They really go to bat for you. And do you know if your mom and a friend each collect just three orders for you, that's six extra orders, $40, $50 a piece. We're talking an extra $250 to $300 on your party. Mm. You got that host rewards chart nearby? Look at the $700 uh, yep. line. Look at the $1,000 line. Look at the $1,000 line. Now look at the $1,300 line. Yeah. A, just mm. a few orders here and there. There's no one thing that's going to get everybody to your party, but every little idea, if it gets you two to three more people or two to three orders, oh my gosh, huge, huge. Okay. So yeah. And, um, and then of course I can, um, I'll set up a Facebook event for you and I'll invite you and you invite all your friends and you know we'll post the link there so this is a great way long distance people um can see um about our products because i post recipes and specials and we've got some videos of our new products in action so even if they can't make it they can see that and and usually quite a few orders come in that way as well okay so but cindy what i want to let you know about is what to expect a couple of days after you get the word out about your party we're gonna set up your Facebook event. We're gonna throw it out to the world. You're gonna start texting people and calling people and talking it up at work. And let me tell you what's gonna happen. You're gonna, when, Cindy, where are you when you get a text or a Facebook alert? Uh, sometimes I'm in the grocery store, <laughs> sometimes I'm at work. Right, you're, you're wherever your phone is, right? Yeah. So you could be absolutely anywhere. And that's where your friends are gonna be when they get word about your party. Who knows where they're going to be? They're going to be at work. They're going to be in the grocery store. They're going to be in a line to pick up their kid at school or wherever. Um, so you never know where they're going to be. They won't always be at a place where they can check their calendar. So you're going to hear from the nose first. Those are the people who don't even need to check their calendar. They look at the date and they know, oh, my mother's 80th birthday, can't go. Boom. And they're going to respond right away, can't go. So you will hear from the nose first. So Cindy, I can see through this phone. I need you to hold up your right hand and repeat after me. Okay. <laughs> I do solemnly swear. I do solemnly swear. When I invite to my show and I get a bunch of no's, I won't cancel. When I invite people to my show and get a bunch of no's, I won't cancel. Right. <laughs> Because like I said, if you're inviting as many people as we just brainstormed, you're probably going to get 8, 10, 15 no's right away. And I don't want you to be discouraged. That is normal. In fact, I want you to celebrate because that's the beginning of your outside orders. When someone says they can't come to your party, 
And I'm going to uh, message you this through Facebook so you can just copy and paste it to people. What I want you to say to them is, oh, I'm so sorry you can't make it. If your plans change at the last minute, feel free to come. In the meantime, if you'd like to see what's new, here's the link. Cindy, how do you feel about saying that to people who um, text you or message you that they can't come? Do you feel comfortable responding that way? If I send, oh, that's easy. If I sent that to you, like as a text, do you feel like you could copy and paste that to people? Just sorry yeah, if I, you didn't make it. Hey, if your plans change, feel free to come at the last minute. In the meantime, if you want to see what's new, here's the link. Yeah, copy and pasting is easy. Yeah, Thank yeah. you for making me, not making me think, because I yeah. overthink things. Yeah. So you can just, and as long as those words sound good to you, I'll, I'm happy to send those to you and you just copy and paste it, okay? And usually a third of the people who can't come will place orders, okay? So a lot of my hosts are looking at eight, 10 orders anyway, outside before their party, sometimes even more, okay? Um, now, Cindy, some people are gonna say to you, oh my gosh, I can't make it, but I definitely wanna place an order. And they're gonna say to you, when are you closing your show? And I'm here to tell you, Cindy, that is code for how long can I procrastinate getting my order to you? Okay. Really? <laughs> it's true. It's true. They don't care when you're closing it. They just need to know when. So I want you to say, I'm aiming to close my party on the night of the show. Okay. Okay. And then what I want you to say to people who say, I want to place an order is I want you to say to them, and I can text this to you as well. So you can just copy and paste, um, say to them, um, thank you so much for, for telling me you, you want to place an order on my show. That's very exciting. Thank you. Um, if it gets to be the day before my party and I haven't seen an order come in from you, do you want me to send you a last minute reminder with this link so you don't have to go looking for it? Oh, that's really smart. This is huge. Okay, now I'm in training mode. I'm out of host mode. This is huge. You know, that's huge, Karen. That really is. I'm okay. stealing that. <laughs> yes. This is what got that consultant $300 worth of orders in 24 hours. Because really, think about it. The host says, oh, all these people say they want to order, and it gets to be a day before it's closing, and most of them haven't ordered, and they're thinking, maybe they were just saying that to make me feel good. Maybe they ran out of money. Maybe they're too broke. Maybe they really didn't want anything from Pepper Chop, and they were just being polite. Okay? But now, if at the time someone says, I want to place an outside order, the host says, Oh, okay, great, thank you so much because you're helping me get this rock crock. Um, hey, if it gets to be the day before the party and I haven't seen an order in from you, you want a reminder with the link so you don't have to go looking for it. What usually happens is her friends say very enthusiastically and believably, oh my gosh, yes, please do that because otherwise I will totally forget. So now the host doesn't feel like, oh, maybe they changed their mind, maybe they're broke. The host feels like, yes, they're like me, they get forgetful, they get busy, they forget what day it is, they forgot I'm having a party because they couldn't go, and they are happy to get that reminder from me. When I started doing this, two ideas gave me a $1,000 show average. I was stuck at about a $700 show average for years. The two ideas I changed, number one, say to the host, who are two people who love you dearly, who would do anything for you. All you're asking is, can you take a catalog to work to see if anybody you know needs anything? It's an easy, easy favor to ask. Everybody knows two people who love them, okay? That brought in a few hundred dollars in orders right away. The other thing was this outside order thing. Getting permission, you know, can I send you a reminder? And their friends say, yes, please do. Now the host do it, okay? Mm. So without being a great salesperson, Without changing any of my skills in what I'm doing at my shows, my show average went up, okay? Just because of the ideas that we give the host. Being a great host coacher will get you way further in this business than being a great cook. If you're also a great cook, good for you. I'm not. So I have to be a really good host coacher, okay? Because I'm never going to wow and amaze people with culinary expertise, okay? And besides, I don't cook at my shows, my, my guests do, so who cares? <laughs> so, <laughs> so can you guys see what a difference host coaching makes and how this is probably the single most important thing in the long-term success of your business? Because this is what's gonna get people through the door. This is what is gonna get you those outside orders. 
okay? Now, I also talk to my host about outside bookings. I might not, do, uh, this is not, by the way, I would probably end this conversation here, and, but I would be in touch with Cindy again. And I would say, now I like phones. So before I hang up, I would say, hey, Cindy, can we touch base again um, next week? Just so I can see how things are coming along. Okay. Sure. And then I would schedule the next call. Or you can say, hey, can I text you in a couple of days to see how things are going? You don't usually have to get permission to text somebody, but you do kind of get permission to, get to call them and schedule that call. So now mm -hmm. we're talking again. So Cindy, how's it going so far? It's going really good. Are you, did you get a bunch of no's like I said you would? You were totally right. I got a bunch of no's and you know what? I didn't freak out. Yeah. And <laughs> how, many, how many people are saying they're going to place orders already? Uh, so far, I've got like six people. Yeah. See? Awesome. Yeah. And did you get permission from them to um, contact them, you know, to give them a reminder? Yes. Yes. They were really happy about that because yeah, I know some of my friends forget things and you're Absolutely. totally right. Yep. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, um, Cindy, there's going to be a lot of people, especially as you follow up closer to the time, because a lot of people aren't going to RSVP until the last three to four days before. I say it doesn't matter when a party's booked. It all comes together in the last three to five days when you reach out personally to the people who haven't RSVP'd. You know, you can um, message them personally. Do you guys know that on a Facebook event um, is the thing that says message guests? And the host can click on it and she go to the maybes and click all the names of the maybes. And it doesn't go out as a group text. It goes out as an individual text. And again, I send these words to my host. Cindy, about three to four days before the party, can you click all the maybes? and say, hey, I'm just trying to get my head count together because the Pampered Chef lady's calling me tomorrow to figure out the, the menu. Will you be joining us on Friday? So how does that sound? Does that sound like if I send you those words, can you send that? Sure, sure. And then to, and then to the people who haven't RSVP'd at all yet, they haven't said maybe, they haven't said yes, they haven't said no, can you click on their names too and send that? Sure. Okay. And that's when the bulk of the RSVPs will come in. Okay, not before, people forget. They get that one notification of the party, they're in the pickup line at school and they say, I gotta check my calendar and guess what? Out of sight, out of mind. And if people don't accept the invite, chances are they're not seeing any of the posts um, on the party. And that's another thing, but I'll get, to, I'll get to that a little bit later about how to host coach for, for Facebook, okay? But Cindy, I wanna talk to you about um, bookings. Do you know that you get a half price item for every party that's booked from yours? I did see something like that. The stuff yeah. That gave me. When those parties hold, you get a half price item at each one of those parties. And I know you said in addition to rock rocks, uh, to a rock rock, you wanted like quite a few pieces of stoneware. Well, and now I'm looking at the catalog and now I want that grill thing too. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> then you know what? It's going to really be helpful if you, if you have some friends who want to schedule a party. Now, so you're going to get a lot of no's. Like I said, usually only a third of the local people that you invite are going to walk through the door that day. So there's three things I want you to be looking out for. Number one is when you invite somebody and they tell you they can't come, some of them are going to be really disappointed. Maybe a coworker will be like, oh, I'm so bummed I can't go. I love Pepper Chap and they have a new catalog out. Oh. Bummer. Okay, I'll place an order though. Look for those people who seem really disappointed. And Cindy, here's what I want you to say to them. I want you to say something like this. Oh my gosh, you should think about having a party of your own. If you, if, if you did, I, I would come to it. I would totally come to it. And I'll even bring a friend if I can. Do you want me to have my pamper chef lady contact you? Cindy, do you feel like you could say that to people who seem genuinely disappointed that they're missing your party? It doesn't sound pushy at all or anything like that. I hate to, my, I'd hate to put that kind of pressure on my friends. Yeah, and so you're just, you're looking at people who are saying, oh my gosh, I'm so bummed. I love Camper Chef, okay? And you're just asking, do you want me to have my Camper Chef lady call you? Because, gosh, you should have a party. Some people think they're not going to get anybody to, to their party. So if you tell them you'll come and bring a friend, they're much more likely to say yes. Now, there's a okay. second group of people I want you to be on the, on the lookout for. And those are the people who say, okay, I can't come to your party, but I'd love to place an order. 
So maybe it's a coworker and they're flipping through the catalog and they start writing things down and then they start crossing things off because the list is getting too long. And then they go, they, they're not even at the, the staples and they're like, the madness has to stop. I have to stop here because I can't buy it. So these are people who can't come to your party, but they clearly want a lot of product. Okay. What I, what I suggest you say to them is, oh my gosh, you know, you should think about having a party to get free stuff. That's why I'm doing it because I want a rock crock. And you know what? If you had a party, I would totally come to it. And I would even bring a friend if I could. Would you like me to have the Pampered Chef Lady contact you to talk about that to see if it's something you might want to do? Cindy, how do you feel about saying that to people who clearly want more than they can order? Do you feel like you could say that? I, I can try. Okay. okay. Yep. And again, you're not twisting their arms. You're just... You know, you're responding because they clearly said they want more. They, they were crossing things off the list or said the madness has to stop because it's not going to stop there, right? All right Can I just give them your information or, or do I have to get their information to you? Um, either way. Uh, okay. You, know, you can say, uh, do you want me to have the Pampered Chef Lady contact you? Then you send me their contact information and I reach out and we schedule a time that works. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, and then the third group of people are the people who say, okay, I can't come. And then you say, oh, would you like to see a catalog? And they're like, I can't, that's too dangerous. I love Pamper Chef, but I am just broke right now. <laughs> and for those people, first, please find out, are they just saying they can't come because they're broke? If that's the case, tell them to come anyway, because placing an order is, not, is optional. And if they really are broke, they probably can't afford to go out to dinner and a movie with their friends because that's more money than buying paper check products, right? So mm -hmm. they probably need a fun night out with friends. So you tell them, are you, is that the reason why you're not coming? Because if it is, just come anyway. Just come for the fun. Okay. And you know what? They're going to find out a little, a little bit about the business. If they need additional income, you know, you could be the hero that introduced them to that. Okay. Um, but if, if they say, no, no, really, I've got something going on that night, but, but you know, I love Pamper Chef, but I just can't afford it right now. All right, it's time for a pop quiz. What do you think I want you to say to them? And here's a hint. It sounds an awful lot like what you just said to the other mm -hmm. two people. <laughs> Can I have my Pamper Chef lady contact you? You should have a party because I totally come. <laughs> yeah, that's perfect. There you go. Yay. Yes, you passed the quiz. Okay. And again, if they say no, that's fine. But just kind of put it out there to the people who really seem disappointed, who are ordering less than they really want, who, or who say, I love Pamper Chef, but I can't afford it right now. Okay. Um, and Cindy, you're going to get a half price item at each one of their parties. And my parties are live and they're virtual. So if they live far away, they can do a virtual or a catalog party. Okay. And then guys, talk to every host about the business. Can you guys show of hands how many of you were hosts first before you became a consultant? Most people were over half. Okay. So, Hey, Cindy, when I gave you that hose packet, I mentioned that there was information about the business in there. Um, and most people who become consultants were hosts first. Have you looked at that at all? Is this something that, that you're at all curious about learning a little more about? Oh, I don't, I don't. I don't know if that's for me, Karen. I don't know. <laughs> you don't know. Well, of course you don't know. You don't really have any information yet. But you know what? I encourage you to think about it because your party's coming up in a week or so. And if you're even slightly curious, I encourage you to look through that information because we're going to be talking again before your party. And if you're even, if you're, if you're thinking, yeah, maybe, then let's talk. Because if you want, your party coming up can be a kickoff party. You can take some of what you earn for free as a host and you can put it toward the cost of the kit. And you can have any bookings that come from the party to help you get started. So um, just anytime you get a few minutes, just kind of look through that and, and let me know if, if you're curious, okay? Okay. All right, very good. That's it. Um, all right. Yeah, so just so you guys know, that's all I do. I just bring it up, I'm planting a seed. Most people, when they first hear about this business, say no the first time they hear about it. So get the no out of the way. Because if you spring it on them at the end of their party and they're like, whoa, I never thought of that, their first inclination is going to be, no, 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 I don't think so. So get the no out of the way, but you let them know that their party could be a kickoff party. So you're planting that seed and, and you're just saying, you know, look through it and we'll talk again and let me know if it's something you want to talk more about. So it's a seed planted. 
Okay. So that's um, post coaching before the party. Okay. Lots and lots of ideas. Cindy, when I was brainstorming with you, I think I prejudged because because um, I know you. Um, mm -hmm. But usually, when I'm talking to hosts, some of the questions that I also ask is, um, "Do you have kids? If so, how old are they? If the kids are young, I say, do you go, do they go to daycare? Did you invite all the daycare people? If the kids are older, I say, are they involved in, in any um, schools or activities after school? Um, yeah, they go to ballet. Did you invite the other ballet moms? They go to karate. Did you invite the other karate uh, parents? Um, they're in um, soccer. Oh, bring it to the soccer field with those postcard invitations. So I ask them. And then I also like to ask, where else do you go in your week? Where are you going this week? I'll ask the host. And, and based on the response, I'll give some ideas of how they could circulate that catalog. Okay. So I try to tailor it to the host to make it super easy. If I feel like that the ideas I'm sharing are coming across as a homework assignment, I would say, Cindy, I want to remind you that ideas are just ideas. They're not homework assignments. I want to help you get the most you can from your party. I want you to just pick and choose the ones that are easy for you. Because a host doesn't have to do everything I recommend. And I don't know what's going to really jive with her and really speak to her. So I'm going to kind of put, throw it all out there. And if a host kind of latches on to, to just a few things, they're probably, you know, three or four things, three or four ideas and run with it, they're probably gonna have a great party. But I wanna let them know this can be tailored to who they are. Okay, any other questions before we get to some things that we do at the show and after the show that comes to host coaching? Okay. I just have one question. Cool. I have to go, um, but you said you were recording this, so I was just wondering if we would have access to it after. Yes, as long as it records successfully, which I won't know until okay. I try to upload it to YouTube, then I will post it. And you can fast forward to the last half hour so you don't have to listen to it all over again. Perfect. Unless you love the word choices so much, you want to hear it again, you can do that. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, well, good night. All right, so now that's some of the ideas that I share with the host ahead of time. Again, I would talk with um, Cindy two to three days before, encourage her to personally reach out to people via text, or if their coworkers talk to them, most people do not RSVP to the last minute because yeah, we're a busy culture. We usually kind of take, take life one mini crisis at a time. So you gotta wait till the show's right around the corner. So that is normal. Just reassure your hosts, it's all gonna be okay. In fact, not too long ago, I had a host who was ready to cancel her show because of all the no's. And I said, remember I told you you're gonna get those no's? And um, so I said, you know, if you're going to cancel, you're going to have to call everybody. You're going to have to contact everybody to make sure that somebody didn't just RSVP is going to show up anyway. And if you're going to contact them all, how about contact them to see if they're coming? Because she hadn't heard from a lot of people. So she was a little hesitant. And I said, I'll text you some words and you just see if you can send it to 10 people. And it was just, hey, I'm trying to get my head count together because the Pamper Chef lady is calling me tomorrow to, to um to, uh, to schedule the food or to plan the menu, are you gonna be able to make it? Within five minutes, she had six RSVPs of yes. Oh yeah, I meant to call you. Yes, 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 yes. So then I said to her, she was like, oh my gosh, I have six people coming. So I said, can you message 10 more people when you get home tonight? She goes, I'm gonna be messaging 10 more people now. Are you kidding me? She ended up having 17 people at her party. Wow. They get the no's and then they don't hear from people. And so they assume the worst. So. Be the voice of reason and calm and let them know, hey, you know, just because they haven't responded doesn't mean they're not coming, doesn't mean that they don't want to come. Some of them just forgot all about it or they didn't even notice they got invited because they missed the alert or they missed the text. Okay. All right. So now we're at the party. Okay. So when I'm at the show and I'm setting up, I ask the host, hey, Cindy, um, if two people, you remember how I said you get a, a half price item at every party that's booked from yours? Yep. So if two people tonight were to um, schedule parties, what are the two biggest ticket items you would want that you would reserve to order at their parties because you wanted it half off? Ooh, let's see. Half off. Well, assuming I don't get everything I want on my list, right, Karen? Um, let's see. I think I could use a deep covered baker. Deep covered baker, okay. Yep. 
and how are the knives oh, in your house? Oh, well, some of them are good, but you know what I really want? Yeah. That twelve-inch skillet. I want the that twelve-inch skillet. skillet. Okay. So bad. <laughs> All right, because you know what, Cindy? If I can get up to the front of the room and say, "Hey, the first person who schedules a party is Cindy's going to order a twelve-inch skillet," and they're starting their show with like a, over a hundred-dollar order, I guarantee you they're going to be tripping over themselves. Ooh. Okay, so this is what I do. So, Cindy, when the time comes, I'm going to say, hey, Cindy, you know, if somebody scheduled a party tonight and you were to get a half price item, what would you want? Just you tell me 12 inch skillet, okay? Okay. We're good, right? You and me. All right, we so got this. When the time comes, and you know what? And I do, you know, feed the witness. I'll say, how are your knives? Do you want a knife block set? Because I'll tell you, if a host wants a knife block set, that's a $230 order at half price that somebody's going to have their, that's going to be on someone's party. I'm telling you, they will be fighting over that order. So when I get to the part of the party where I do the booking slide, the booking slide is, hey, what, how, why would you want a party in, in general? You know, and there's a slide that says future party pick. I say, by the way, so any of you who schedule a party tonight, guess what? Your lovely friend, Cindy, that you love and adore, she's gonna get a half price item. And Cindy, what, was it? what, would, what would you get if someone wanted a half price item? And she says, that 12 inch skillet man skillet with the lid the 12 inch skillet dinner set oh my gosh who wants to start their party i go show of hands who wants to start their party with over a hundred dollar order in the bank okay then you're going to want to schedule your party first like closest in so you can get that and cindy also said she wanted deep covered baker so the next person can also start their order you know their show with um with about a 50 dollar order in the bank okay so yeah it helps it helps that they know what their host is getting. It helps to know what they're getting on their show because they're starting with a nice big order. Cookware, cutlery, yeah, people love to start their shows with that. That's also host coaching, okay? Then host coaching continues after the party. So I would say to Cindy after the party's over, hey, Cindy, can I borrow you for a couple of minutes? I just want to show you where you are so far. And, you know, if Cindy said to me, 13 people are coming, um, I've got like 12 people placing outside orders, I've got six of them in hand, the others are coming in. Now I'm going to just kind of review everything. So Cindy, you thought 13 people were going to come, but only 10 showed up. Who were the three that couldn't make it? And I'm writing them down on a piece of paper that's in her packet. I'm writing them down on the packet or on the back of an order form that's there. I flip it over and I just say, you know, potential orders. Who were the people that couldn't come? Who are the outside orders? Who are the people that said they want to place outside orders? And I'll say, he, I'll show her who has placed orders so far. I said, two people are taking the, the catalogs home. I can't remember who they were. Do you remember who they were? If she says no, I'll show her who's ordered so far. And she'll say, oh, I guess it was, you know, Cheryl and Cherry who took the catalogs home because those are the ones that don't have orders here. I write those names down. So now we're looking, I said, now did your husband take a catalog to work? No, he wouldn't do it. And all of a sudden the husband's back. I'll take it to work. Now that the husband has seen what Pamper Chef is all about, all of a sudden, oh sure, no problem, honey, I'll take it to work now. So I review some of the ideas that I, I had shared with you before that maybe, you know, cause now all of a sudden when they see where they are, where they are, so, so you know, Cindy, you're at 750 so far. If we can get another $250 in orders, which is about five to seven more orders, you'll hit the thousand dollar mark and you're looking at that, that raw crock um, with the burner thing all for free. That's, that's five to seven orders. Let's see if we can come up with those names. Okay. And before I leave, and she's usually pretty excited and sometimes there's friends still at the party and you can say, anybody um, want to take a catalog to work on behalf of Cindy? Because she needs a few more orders to get that raw crock. There's usually a couple of people say, yeah, I'll take it. Sure. Yep. Not a problem. Okay, these aren't even her best buddies. She already asked the, the, the kidney donors. I call them kidney donors. People who do anything for you, they'd give you a kidney. She's already talked to her kidney donors before the party. They brought some stuff in. So now these are just friends who are like, yeah, I've got, I'm, I'm a teacher. People are always buying stuff there. I'll take a catalog to work. Okay, and then um, I schedule a time to close within 24 to 48 hours. Don't say take a week because the people who haven't ordered have known about the party for a couple of weeks. They're clearly procrastinators. If you give them another week, they'll take a whole other week to drag their feet. It is helpful for the host, and I find, and this is true, Pamper Chef did research, the faster you close the party, the more the outside orders come in. Because if, if Cindy goes out to her friends and say, hey, just want to remind you, sorry I couldn't make it to the party last night, but I'm keeping it open till Thursday, 
you know, here's the link. All of a sudden it's like, oh, that's like the day after tomorrow. Oh, I better get right on that. Okay, so I schedule a time to close. It also gives me time to follow up with any booking leads who haven't chosen dates. Because remember, for every party that's dated, that's on, that's that we put a date in and click that booking box, she's getting a half price sign up. This is also when I'm going to talk to Cindy about the business again. Um, I love the home office materials and I use them exclusively except for the um, the uh, survey slips at the party. I use my own. I have a box that says, if your host were to become a consultant, would you have a party to help her get started? Yes or no. I average two to three bookings per party. But... I average five or six who say yes, if my host were to become a consultant, I'll have a party to help her get started. There are people who clearly say no to me, but now Cindy is their sister, their cousin, their best bud from childhood. And even though they don't really want to have a party with me, well, if Cindy were doing it, sure, I'd help her get started. So now it's after the show, and I say, so Cindy, right now your show's at 750 in sales. It's probably going to be at $1,000 by the time we close. But even as it stands right now at 750 in sales, do you know if you were the consultant at this party, you would have made about $165? Really? Yeah, not bad, huh? And you know what? You had five people, and I show you those slips. You had five people who said if you were to give this business a try, um, you'd have a party to help them get started. I know when we talked about it before your show, you didn't seem overly enthusiastic, but I'm wondering, is this something you might want to talk a little bit more about before you make your decision final? I don't know, Karen. Um, you know, well, I don't of know. You don't know. You don't have any information yet. <laughs> and so I'm not asking you, I'm not asking you for your hand in marriage. I'm not asking if you want to sign up and become a consultant. I'm asking before I put all of these shows in my calendar and do, do it myself, do you want to talk? I can explain in more detail how it works and answer any questions you, you might have at the off chance right. you might want to take these bookings. I mean, it's up to you. I'll, I'll hear you out. The okay. answer's probably going to be no, Karen, but I'll hear you out. That's okay. That's all right. <laughs> so then I would schedule a time to talk with Cindy in the next day or two. And you guys are new, so you could just schedule that time um, with your director. Do you think that at this point people change their minds? They do a lot. So if you ask your host one and one time only before the party and they say no. So even if Cindy had said straight out no to me, I'd say, Cindy, I know you said no before, but I just, I wouldn't feel right unless I let you know. Here's how much you would have made. Here's how many of your friends say they'd have a party. So are you sure, is it still a no or is this something you might want to talk a little bit more about? Okay. And can a I lot. say something? A lot, of people, a lot of people change their mind at this point. So I just want to say something, Karen, because I, I don't know if everybody, I've been doing this six years. Does anybody want to guess how many times Karen asked me to become a Pampered Chef consultant before I finally called her? How are you guys? Nobody wants to guess. I believe I flat out told her no way in hell was I going to do it <laughs> three times. <laughs> Until one day I just decided to call her. So, yeah. and six years later, I'm still doing this. Yeah. So people say no, and then they change their minds because you know what? There's different facts and evidence. A lot of times they think they don't want to do this business because they think nobody makes any money at this. My friends aren't going to buy this. My friends aren't going to want to have shows. Now they're like, my friends spend how much on Pamper Shop? Are you kidding me? How many stuff they have parties? Ooh, okay. Now it's like, okay. Yeah. So yes. Sometimes they do change their minds, so bring it up again, all right? Now, I do want to talk a little bit about Facebook. I do some parties that are all on Facebook. They're not live at all, and I do, but most of my shows, most of my live shows, I promote on Facebook. It is super important to get the host not to prejudge. Encourage them to invite all of their friends on Facebook, okay? And then I say to the host, if we're, gonna, if we're gonna do this on Facebook, I need you to do a few things, okay? I need you to check in to this event each day for a few minutes. A lot of people are going to miss the initial invite, 
And if they don't respond to that, chances are they will see none of the posts. So I, I would tell my host, so are you willing, every time I post something, are you willing to tag three people under the post? I post um, something about healthy snacks with our popcorn popper. Tag three people that love healthy snacks. I post a recipe in a slow cooker, you know, post, you know, tag three people who are always doing rock, um, crock pot recipes. You know, I host something about um, a product that you think somebody might like. Okay, so tag three people per post. When people get tagged, they'll see it. I also ask the host to PM three to five people a day who haven't responded yet. And just say something like, hey, I just wanted to make sure you didn't miss it because I didn't, I, I, um, you know, I'm having a pamper chat party or, you know, I'm having a party next Saturday. I didn't see a response from you. Um, I just wanted to make sure you didn't miss the event. Okay, so little things like this. Um, a host can ask people to take a link to their party and post it on their wall. Are there three to five people that you know really, really, really well who use Facebook all the time? You're inviting them to their party. Message them and say, hey, you know, I'm really going for this rock rock. Do you, do you think you could um, put a little blurb saying, hey, I'm going to a pamper chat party. Anybody need anything and, um, on your wall and maybe post the link? This is, this is a very easy um, favor to ask. Okay. And I tell my hosts, when someone accepts the invite, that's like they're walking into your house. Greet them, thank them. Okay, if you ignore them, that's like inviting them over and then you're not there when, you, when they arrive. That's not nice. Okay. I also encourage the host to post because they don't know me. So post from me, that shows up in their newsfeed. They don't know Karen Batty, they're, they're glossing through it. But they know Cindy, Cindy's their friend. All of a sudden, Cindy posts the event and it comes through their newsfeed. Now they're stopping and looking more carefully. Okay. Um, some other things about Facebook is, yes, our host can message guests. After they invite, um, under in that square um, at the top right, you know, have how many are invited, how many said yes, how many said maybe. Um, right in that same square is a little thing that they can click to message guests, so make sure they know about that. Okay. And um, you can post something about bring a friend. Okay, bring a friend, get a free gift. Okay, remember I said when, when people bring friends, you don't get stuck in the same circle of people. So offer a free gift, go to the dollar store, pick up things that are just cute and sort of cooking related and use them as door prizes. Money well spent. So, you know, put a thing out there on every Facebook event, bring a friend, get a free gift. If it's a live event, bring a friend, you know, that comes to the party, you get a free gift at the party. Um, otherwise, if you're doing just an all online Facebook show, tell them, you know, for every friend that they invite who accepts the invite, you know, you give them a ticket into a drawing for the door prize. But get them to bring friends, bring friends, bring friends. It's a numbers game. Okay. All right. Now, if you're if you really, really, really want um, to bump attendance, there's some things to consider. Promote the promotion first of all. Get the host really wanting whatever whatever's on special, and promote the heck out of it. And say, you know, the more people you have, the better. So promote the promotion. That means promote the host rewards program. I, I told Cindy, look at that chart. Look at where you get the $700 level. Look at where you get at the $1,000 level. That's five to seven more orders. Let's see if we can get this done. I always offer a bring a friend, get a free gift. It's cheap. And here's the thing. When we're encouraging a host to invite, we're encouraging to invite everybody they know under the sun. When you say to someone, bring a friend, they think, gee, of everybody I know, who loves to the chef the most? who's a total foodie and they hand pick people who are much more likely than the general population to want and need Pampered Chef products. These bring a friend people place the biggest orders and they very often book shows. Because guess what? You're not gonna hear from a, a bring a friend person. You're never gonna hear, oh, I can't have a party. Everybody I know is here. Who would I invite? No one they know is there except the one person who brought them. They're thinking, oh my gosh, my family and friends haven't seen Pampered Chef in forever. I'm gonna have to have a party, okay? You could offer an incentive for outside orders, okay? You could say $250 in outside orders, I'll give you a free fill in the blank. 
215 outside orders means $50 in your pocket. And whatever you're giving the host for free, you're not gonna pay full price for it. You're gonna put it on the host discount because it's an unlimited discount so it doesn't eat into her host rewards and you're gonna make commission on it. Before you offer any incentive, please, 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 please talk to your director about how much it's likely to cost you so you can make an informed decision. You can say $500 in outside orders to get a large round stone with anvils. Hey, $500? You're making over 100 bucks right there. So you give them a stone that costs 52, but you put it on their discount and you make your commission, costs you about $20, $25 to give them that, but you're making over 100. I would trade that any day of the week. You can tell them 715 outside orders to get a free rock rock. I haven't given one away yet, but they could be the first. But it gets them shooting higher. It gets them thinking, oh, I could get $750 in outside orders. Okay. Um, another, another way to boost attendance is say, you know, if you have X number of people up there uh, at your party, um, I'll give you an item up to X amount of dollars at half price. It doesn't usually cost as much of anything to give a half price item because by the time we put it on the host discount and we make our commission and they give us half the money for that product, it's really like dollars. Okay. Again, Talk to your director before you offer any, any, any incentives. Okay. All right. I just want to look over my notes to see if I forgot anything. Okay. I think I, I think I actually got it all. Not bad. Um, any questions or comments? Look, 901. Exactly on time. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, any last minute questions? Comments?